Yo, it's Guido coming at you with a replay review. We got an analysis for Sir Dark Light and his T32 top tier on L. Pilsendorf. Nope, Studzianski. Dang it! Got it wrong. Top tier in his T32. This tank is recently buffed, and Sir Dark Light asked me to take a look at it. First of all, uh, I would drop the GLD and put a vert stab on that thing. I think that's a better piece of equipment if you're going to run the hardening. The other option is some vents, rammer, and vert stab, I think. Also possibility, vents, rammer, IA. I, basically, I would get rid of the GLD and put something a little more useful on there, for sure. All right, we got two artillery. We're on Studzianski, and he is headed for his initial position into the factory, the one little factory that's on this map. And I think this is a good position for a T-32. He's facing a Skirta T-56. Two Scorpions and a TS-5, another Heavy in the M2Y at Tier 7, and some other cats and dogs. So Skoda's a little bit scary. He's got a nice amount of APCR. Kind of stops and looks at that guy, and now we're going to head in here. All right, this is a pretty good position, I think, for a T-32. We're going to come in here. The hatch is on the right side of the turret, as you can see, so we're going to largely be able to keep most of that hidden if we're careful about how much we poke out on this little rubble pile right here. We can actually snipe the T-56's cupola, potentially, depending on how much he's poking and prodding in there. And let's take a quick look at how Sir Darklight handles this. Comes out and he sees the TS-5. All right, so that's that's a bit tough. A T. S5 and the Skoda T56. If we go out and we sit for a long time, they might be able to pick apart a few weak spots. But really, from a hold down aspect, this tank is in really good shape for fighting in this particular position. So let's see how he handles it. So he pops out, they shoot, comes out ever so slowly, and goes after kind of the track area. All right, so where you wanted to be shooting is going after that hatch. All right, the hatch is right there. Get it zoomed in. The dude shoots and kills your commander off, unfortunately. And actually what you got damaged by was a Firefly VC, which was in the back. And I think he actually pinned... Yeah, he got right into your hatch right there. So the TS-5 actually bounced. Further back there, somebody some somewhere is a Firefly VC. Also killed your commander. So fix the commander. TS-5 makes an interesting move. He's going to come across there, and I believe this is going to cover up his hatch. So we back out a bit, and we're just kind of sitting there. Now, again, I would fix the commander immediately, so pay attention to that kind of stuff. Then, as soon as you fix your commander, the timer will start going, and you'll get the kit back. So we're going to come up here, and we're going to take a quick peek. And what are we doing? Uh, okay. So your zoom technique, what I would have done is zoomed in. So that when you come out from behind this wall right here, you don't come out any more than you have to. I would rather that wall be about right there on that tank. The reason being is you'll cover up that hatch even more. All right, just barely around so that no kidding, the wall is right about there. And then you want to shoot that guy. That's really your only possibility. There you go. Now he backs out and does a nice job. As he backs out, that changes the angle and you're gonna have a hard time getting that shot. Again, fix your commander. So he comes back up. Be very careful about sitting there with a little bit of your turret sticking out. I don't know if you can actually see anything, but it's close enough as I would have backed up a little bit more. Don't give him any more chances than he needs. All right, I like the timing on this, but it's a little bit tentative coming out. You kind of click and click. I think based on your last poke, you should have known that this potential or this possibility of seeing him is not there. This whole section is too high, so you really need to come out a little bit more. Now that's an argument against why you can't just keep the edge of that of that wall right there. You actually need to poke out a little higher. So we're just really going slow here. This is just asking him to shoot. All right, so we just took a really long time. And he was able to, looks like, go through the top of your roof right there. That's pretty interesting. I didn't know that that was possible, but look at that. Very interesting right there. That was the Firefly, it looks like, once again, shooting us. So he's taken two chunks out of us. And we've also, no, I'm sorry, that's the Skirta. That was the Skirta that got us, all right? That very interesting shot on the top of the turret right there. As well as the Firefly, who gets another one. 
And we just sort of sit there. We have more SA. There's also an ISU 122S. You know, we really don't have a possibility of pinning this guy. Just, just look at that. I mean, that is not good. None of that is pinnable by you. He has covered up that hatch right there. He's in a pretty much perfect situation to stop you from doing anything. And we'll back out. So you might want to start thinking about what are my other possibilities? Can I get some shots over here? What can I do with this TS-5? Because at this point, every time you poke that TS-5, he has a possibility of pinning you and you have virtually none. If he gets into the hatch, there's also two TDs back there. Actually, it's a medium and a TD. The Firefly VC is shown as a medium. So we're, we're kind of hurting right there. So you ask the yard if you can hit the TS. Probably not. Might be able to get him lit up and back. There you go. Be very careful once again. I think you're just maybe exposing some of your turret right there. Uh, backing up a little bit more. Kind of trying to get this guy baited to shoot. You're zoomed out. This is actually what Sir Darklight's doing. I think I would be zoomed in more so I could kind of see maybe here to see what's going on. And again, you're really just sitting there. I'm kind of curious why he hasn't taken a pop at you. Maybe he's just waiting for you to give him a better shot. If you're going to sit there lit, that lets him know where you are. Back all the way out so you're no longer lit. So at least if you move forward, it's a support. There you go. And that's how you know, right? Somebody else isn't spotting him. That's good. That means he probably doesn't see you. And we poke a little forward and we find him again. Actually, it looks like one of your buddies back there. All right. Once he shoots, once he shoots, get out there and look for a shot. We're just very tentative. Yeah, there's other TD back there. No reason to sit there. If you're not going to poke out and look for a shot, there you go. He just thumped you. If you're not going to go out there and look for a shot, don't sit around with your turret poking around saying, hey, I'm trying to bait you, trying to get you. Look at that. Again, I did not know that spot was there. That is fascinating. Look at that. Right on the top of the... Wow. All right. Learn a new thing, my friends. Learn a new... Ouch. Okay, so the stinking 304 is now paying attention to you. This is exactly what you need to do. Go ahead and tuck up here and... Stop that clown from dropping shells on you. Looks like you went right. Uh, no, that's the... I uh, was thinking he pinned your back deck, but it would have done a lot more damage had it done that. That was actually a decal that's on there. Just, you're fine right now. You lost a lot of hit points, though, by poking and prodding right there without any real plan. So that kind of hurt. Unlucky that the TS-5 did what he did. We'll shift over here. You do have to watch your 6 o'clock. It looks like maybe the Sioux and the AT will see them if they push. I think this is not a bad idea. Come around here and take a couple peeks. Oh, wait a minute. Something saw me. Interesting. As soon as I got spotted there, I would have said, uh-oh, that stupid 304 is going to start shooting me. And that's exactly what he did. Looks like this time maybe he did pen you on the back deck, but he did 213. I would not sit there and let him get another shot. Back out of that even more. Unfortunately, now the TS-5 is perma-spotting you. There he is. So you're lucky you moved back. There you go. Go ahead and... Oh, geez. Someone's shooting you from behind. All right. Let's talk about this engagement right here. You're actually moving your hole one way and your turret the other. You're in a bad situation because you let your turret get out of whack with where, it, where your hole is pointing. So you either had to turn your hole and your turret to the left, in this case... Or maybe spin it all the way around, but you're sort of out of the fight here. Oh man, that just sucks. And we really do it the long way, right? That, that was literally about the longest way possible. And we just snap that off. Alright, good. We got the shot. Fantastic. I thought you killed him, but it was actually the C-130. Now we got this little dude over here doing this action. So let's see how you engage that guy. Taking a look, taking a look, there we go. Zooming in, zooming in. Okay, nope, might have pickled that off. Look, you've got that rubble pile. The best thing you could do here is back out, side scrape out so you can get a better angle on that guy and maybe start shooting him. Kind of back in here. It looks like you thought about it there and maybe thinking about it some more. Just pull back and start shooting at him. You gotta try to get rid of this guy. There we go, that's exactly right. There, very nice. All right, so that's what you're looking for. Got the reload going on. Pull forward a little bit more so he can't shoot you. You don't want to let him have any shots that he doesn't deserve. And all right, 
There he goes. Oh, ooh, okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, this is very important. That wall is destructible. Just shoot at him. Put the pepper right where you think he is, right about thar. Take the shot. All right, you're going to lose some pen going through the wall. You may not pen him, but you will knock that wall down. And now you'll see him. So I think you might actually have enough to pen him as well. There you go. Somebody else decided to do it. The T-150 did what you should have done right there. All right. Here comes the Skirta. Oh, man. Be very careful here. And he's coming hard. All right. So I don't think I would have pushed up here and kind of challenged that guy. I would have hung back a little bit more. Let him come around the corner. Plus, your guys are spotting him. So he's not really going to sneak up on you. All right very careful about this look at the kind of front of your tank coming around see that's his view he's just about got a just about got a side shot on you the good news for you is that your turret is front mounted so not a lot of the front of your tank is going to come through he's looking for the shot he took it oh man that was close that just took a little longer than it should have once he shot you poke out there and give him a little shot into the front turret right there so we got the isu is up on the hill the vc be careful about driving up on things. You can give people your lower hole by doing that kind of thing. This really is, again, the... I'm not really sure what you're doing with the camera, but when I'm making these pokes, I would be zoomed in more because it gives me a better idea where my cover is, where my turret and my gun is, and maybe if I catch him kind of poking around, I can take a shot. So you're out here. I'm thinking maybe you should be about right here when you're making those little pokes. Don't drive around in zoom in, right? Don't start driving down the the alley or try to reposition that way. You do want to zoom out for those things. But when I'm poking out to take a shot like this in close quarters, I want to be zoomed in a little bit so I can kind of find that guy. And this is, again, this is your view. Like, holy cow, if he pops out, we're going to have a hard time getting the gun on, online on this guy. We're going to push in here. A little bit worried about guys maybe shooting you from the middle because, remember, you're going to uncover yourself if you go too much further forward from a shot on the left. The back of your tank is sticking out, so he puts a shot into you right there. And we're just really struggling to get a shot on this guy. Oh boy. Alright, that's not bad. Push this forward. He thinks he's safe, right? You hadn't taken a shot. He didn't realize that you had cleared your gun right there. And maybe he didn't really have anywhere to go anyway. Or felt he didn't. Felt he wasn't able to back up or else he'd get killed. And we clear that dude out. So we got the TS5. He's hanging out over here. Oh, geez. He's actually gone around. So this is kind of watching the minimap. He's actually come around this way. Very surprised he hasn't been nuked by these dudes over here. I think he will be momentarily. So we come around to the middle. Pushing out here. Oh, man. We get lit. TS5 is still alive. This blows my mind. You get away with it. We drive all the way around here and come back to the TS-5 who's pushing in on everybody. And that guy dies. Okay, so <laughs> I think I would have turned around and come back this way. All right, so come back around this way as opposed to go out into the open because you've just exposed yourself to everyone who's hanging out over here. And I think we get away with it, actually, to include the two Arties, three or four in the Hummel. Comes screaming around this way. The ISU-122S is making a runner. We get lucky with the artillery. Kind of running into tanks, trying to get some cover here. And we get back. So we've done a ring around the Rosie there. A little bit surprising. Like I said, surprised you got away with it. Not the direction I would have gone. The only good thing is it was a possibility of shooting the guy in the flank. Or getting in behind the TS-5. So we're looking off that way, trying to figure out what's going on. And it kind of strikes me a little bit as not really having a plan, right? We're, we're maybe thinking about the ISU-122. We know the EZ-8, ARL, Scorpion, and Super Hellcat are down there. So what are we missing? We're missing probably none of them. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. No, we're missing somebody. A Super Hellcat. No, we know where he is. Who are we missing? One of the Scorpions. All right, the scorpion without the G. I was very surprised you didn't die here. Very surprised. We're going to move up this way. Again, surprised you didn't die. This is not the way I would have gone. It's just, it's uncovered. If anybody's in that back corner, they're going to see you. 
I would have assumed the ISU is still sitting in that bush. It looks like he's not. And then we just decide maybe that wasn't really what we wanted to do. Spinning around and driving backwards. So again, I think another move that you kind of got away with that wasn't the wisest move to make right there. I would have hung out in the factory a little bit longer and looked for shots from this section over here, all right, where you were earlier. You'd have to be careful, though, because if you get spotted, the Artie might get some shots. I do like the idea that you're falling back, though, and going back to where the strength of your team is. You don't have the hit points anymore to be kind of the tip of the spear kind of guy. So it looks like you're going to decide to fall back and try to get some shots. I don't like cutting this inside so much right here. I would have gone down the edge here and come across much further back, much further north on the map. Because what we're going to do is we're going to drive across. I want you to watch the circles where the ARL Super Hellcat Scorpion is. So they've pushed in towards your cap. So again, I like that you're going back to your cap to help these guys, but this is a very dangerous way to go right here. Just look at the circles. Right now it's on the ARL 44. So if we look at this, the way it's set up over here, and it would be difficult for them to do potentially because there is a WZ sitting there, but they could get into this forward bush, especially that Super Hellcat could be especially dangerous in terms of that. And if they pick you up here, now you're already magnet, or maybe even they shoot and kill you by shooting you in the side. So you take care of all of that by coming around behind this building and coming down this edge as opposed to just cutting across the open area. Just look how your circles are now encompassing a lot of territory that the bad guys could be sitting in. But we made it. That's a good thing. Come up in here. Pay attention to how... Now see that little move right there again. You're really sort of just damming the torpedoes that's a fairly open spot there and again if something had been in there they'd have picked you up right there i think it would have sat back there a little bit further back for a little bit longer kind of hung out and let's see if they make an unwise push we make it but we keep moving oh we're kind of uncovering again we're a big heavy tank we're really getting closer and closer so these bushes are giving you less and less hiding capability and all of a sudden we get a scorpion moving in the middle you're going to zoom in. You're just never going to get a light on that guy. That's why I like being zoomed out a bit. You can see that hill there. You know he's in the middle thing, in the middle ditch. You're just ne not going to get a shot on that. The problem with focusing on things like that is oftentimes you'll miss another guy moving around. So we sort of get up here and we decide to just push in. If you're going to go, go. Once you break out from the bushes right there, don't stop. you got to try to get to cover. I would also maybe not shoot at something like that scorpion that far away because it's going to reduce what little camo this thing has and make you even more visible. This is a good idea to get right up into this building. All right, so there's that guy. He's sitting there on the corner, and I don't think we actually get spotted doing this, as I recall. So we don't get spotted. Awesome. Come around here. Instead of doing it this way, I would have put my nose into it and side scraped backwards to give me some kind of chance to bounce this shot. But if I am going to make this move, I'm going to make this shot very quick. All right. So you're kind of zooming in going, oh my gosh, where'd he go? Dude, he's right there. Right. So just pickle that shot off, come around the corner, pickle it off, get back. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh, shoot, shoot. Okay. <laughs> See, see what I'm saying there? You actually got killed by the ARL and not the, the Scorpion. Scorpion may have tucked back up in, in there. If we zoom out and take a look at where the Scorpion was, it looks like he was behind this bush hanging out in this corner. So there was a little shack there. Again, the same thing with the shell going through something. It'll go through those little shacks. I'd have poked that shot and pulled right back in. Maybe you get the kill and knock that guy out. That'll be great. Looks like he got killed by the ARL, which is further back into the buildings down here. Uh, as you poked out so lots of little things right there great initial position i thought it was good we talked a lot about how you might want to do the poking and prodding on that you just exposed yourself for no real reason way too much lost a lot of hit points to it uh, be careful about the arty as far as letting him have shots that he doesn't deserve the route to go around i like the idea of getting behind the ts5 but i think you really needlessly expose yourself to a lot of shots you got away with it 
the push into the back corner right there. I thought that was unwise, especially based on most of their tanks were down in the south. I'd have turned around, at least hung out in the factory, if not just turned around immediately. When you go back to the cap, which I thought was a good idea, be very careful about your lines of approaches. Pay attention to your circles. Don't put too many of their little spotted last known positions inside your circle. I thought you could have faded way over here to about the B row and then come down the one column as opposed to just crossing across the open. If one of them had snuck up inside there, they might have seen you and, and taken you out. We just talked about the last engagement. You knew he was there. Pop out, shoot, go back. No sense sitting there. And if the light goes off, for God's sake, shoot and get out of the way or just get out of the way. Back up if you think that you don't have a shot. You just didn't have the hit points and you also didn't have the armor positioning. If you'd have backed out and side scraped right there and you were lit by the scorpion, the ARL probably wouldn't have had a shot on you to begin with. Only the scorpion would have. So I'd have like I said, side scrape out, shoot, tuck back up in there and pray because you only had 30 something hit points and the two already are going to start trying to splash you and spank you. There you go, Sir Darklight. I hope that helped out. Everybody else who has any suggestions for him, toss them down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. That is all I've got. We will see you.